Tonight, live from the Inspire Theater, on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Fremont Street in the heart of fabulous downtown Las Vegas, we present the Downtown Podcast. Starring your host, Dylan Jorgensen, Akil Evans, music by yours truly, DJ Lenny Love Alfonso. Tonight's guest, project director from Congo Justice, Adia Lancaster. Magician Steve August. Musical performance by Ray Fortune. And now, ladies What's good, ladies and gentlemen? This next segment is sponsored by Love DTLV. Love DTLV is a way for people that have been touched by the spirit of downtown Las Vegas to say, I love downtown Las Vegas. All right, our next guest, I'm really glad she's here. She's so generous, she kind of reminds me of Mother Teresa. And she's just as courageous as Rosa Parks. Please put your hands together for the director of Women Affairs at Congo Justice, Adia Lancaster. Hi. My name is Akil. It stands for Intelligent and to Reason. Does Adia, does that stand for anything? Yes. It's of Swahili origin, and it means a gift from God. Oh, no doubt. Nice. OK. And that seems to be the truth, because I Googled you. And according to Google, she's a very unselfish person. And it all started in the sixth grade with the Reduce, Reuse, Recycle video, right? That's right. I don't know. I don't believe all that to be true about me being a very unselfish person. Hmm. But definitely being a, a new mother um, has made me more of a selfless person overall. And um, when I saw that video in sixth grade, I just knew the impact that it made on me that an individual or any individual can really make a difference in the world, can really impact the world in a big way. So that really sparked something within me. I absolutely agree. Congratulations. She's a new mother. Wow. Two years. Two years? <laughs> wow. All right. So you, you work at the Congo Justice. Mm -hmm. And that's here downtown, right? That's right. Yeah. Do you live downtown? No, I don't. Why not? Is downtown not a safe place to live? I think it still has a lot of work to do, especially for a family. But with that said, there's a lot of potential here downtown. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Definitely. With all you know, the space and um, abandoned buildings, there's opportunity for things to grow and to be developed down here. Absolutely. And, I agree. And make it more family friendly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is the plan, Yeah. to really build this community here. So what exactly is your role at Congo Justice? I am a project director. And what I do mostly are live presentations about human trafficking. And I also. Wait, wait, wait. Human trafficking? You yes. mean like uh, how it gets busy on Fremont Street at night and all, there are all, all those people there that human traffic? No. <laughs> no. I'm talking about modern day slavery. What do you mean? Well, you know slavery. Everybody knows what slavery is, right? Um, it's holding a person against their will through force, fraud, or coercion. There's two types, labor trafficking and human, um, human sex trafficking. What is, human sex trafficking, you mean uh, like people being kidnapped? Or what do you mean exactly? What does that mean? Human sex trafficking doesn't necessarily mean that they're kidnapped. Um, our trend here in Las Vegas actually is more of a manip manipulative uh, Romeo type of pimp or boyfriend scenario that we see. So they lure young girls to fall in love with them and then turn them out to sell their bodies for sex. But isn't uh, you know, prostitutes and, and all that, isn't that legal here, prostitution? And don't most of the women and men that profit off their body, don't they choose that? Prostitution is legal in Nevada, but not in Las Vegas. And oh. Not everybody in the entire world knows that. They come here thinking that um, prostitution is legal. It is absolutely not. Um, there are people who choose to do that as a profession called sex workers. But those who have pimps, and especially if they're under the age of 18, are not doing it on their own volition. I mean, you don't grow up as a child wanting to sell your body for sex. They are forced to do it. They have no choice. They're enslaved to do it. and. Um, it's hard to get out of it. I see. I understand what you're talking about now. And you spread awareness about this issue. Mm -hmm. How long have you been at Congo Justice? Since 2011. 
do you really think that just you know coming out and talking about it, and I see some people on Fremont Street, does it really make a difference? Can, you, can we really make a difference? Absolutely. I mean, it just begins with one person. And um, to give you an example, we, we do outreach on Fremont Street every day. Even we have a team right now out on Fremont Street with a table raising awareness about human trafficking. And one um, time they ran into a survivor, or actually, I'm sorry, a victim of trafficking. She wanted to get out. She wanted to get away from her pimp. Um, we were able to safely uh, take her to a, a local shelter. And from there, she was connected with Salvation Army. And they were able to send her home. They sent her home. And uh, she like sang our praises, because if it wasn't for us kind of you know, reaching out and and taking her to the next step, then you know she would have still been in the trade, the illegal sex trade. Wow. She answered my question. Wow. Wow. Thank you for sharing. And you know, I really didn't even know that it was like that, where women are young girls, where they're young girls that are being tricked, like you said, by pimps. That people are pretending to be boyfriends. Absolutely. To do yes. That. So. I'm, I'm curious now, I wanna get more involved. I'm sure these people wanna get more involved too. What, what can we do? There's a lot you can do first. Well, we're having an info session, a Human Trafficking 101 workshop at our office next week, next Thursday at six. So you all are invited. Um, but you can just stop by our office. We're always there, our doors are open. And we would love to talk to you more and um, you know, show our documentary that we produce called Surviving Sin City. Yeah. Um, we have an internship program. If you're interested in doing outreach, we can hook you up with that too. Um, there are a lot of opportunities to, to help with this matter. But education is the key to prevention. Education. Mm -hmm. So you think, so I'm curious, because we talked about education and, and people just not being aware. Is education or building a trust and community here downtown is that more important? Which one will get you the move down here with your family? <laughs> I think both are important, and they go hand in hand. I mean, in order to build trust, to build a community, you need to, be, you need to inform each other. Like, if mm -hmm. we were you know, t to build our friendship, we need to tell each other s our stories, like where we came from. So that's the same deal. Like, in order to really create a community, we have to know what's going on in our community, what's going on in where we live, right? to be aware. And then once we know, then it's, our, it's up to us to decide what we want to do about that, right? And, and then, then go from there and start building and working together. It's all about collaboration and really working together on common goals to, you know, to, make a, to create a better community. No yeah. doubt. Thank you so much, Adia. You're welcome. I learned something tonight. If you want to learn more about Adia and the Congo Justice, please check out congojusticelv.org or nhfinternational.org, or you can email Adia at adia at congojustice.com. Thank you so much. Thank you, Akil. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much. All right, stay tuned for our next interview with Steve Austin. Give it up for Adia. <laughs> the snake's best friend, our host, Mr. Tim Jorgensen. Ah, thank you. All right. Well, I know all of you think that I'm a very brave, strong person, and I'm here to prove that fact to you by actually bringing a snake out. But before we do this uh, whole snake deal, we uh, should thank the two guests who brought it. So we have two guests, and they're both magicians. They've been doing it for 15 years here in Las Vegas. They've also started a second company, which is called Reptile Rescue. And Reptile Rescue uh, well, it involves snakes, and it involves saving, you know, it's not that I don't like snakes. I mean, it's not, I mean, it's not that, so here's the deal, I'm really nervous about the snake, but I do think, I do want the snakes to be happy and healthy and be kept not in cages, I don't want to hurt them, I just don't want them to hurt me, and I like the glass, I like the glass barrier is what I'm getting at, okay, which we're going to break tonight for your entertainment. So please put your hands together for Steve and Maria, come on out. Oh. Hello. Yeah. 
Hello. Hello. Yeah, here, come sit over here. Okay. And, you know, normally I hug the guests, but you get double. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, we've been doing it long enough now that I actually don't get the willies anymore before I come up on stage. But it, my heart was racing. I'm like, what's going on? Am I nervous? And then I, yeah, I just don't, I mean, it's moving slow, which I do like. But I just, I've seen videos, and I know how they do. Yeah, yeah some, some move faster. This species yeah. is fast. pretty slow. But Sometimes they, they slew okay. slow before they strike and kill and drink your blood. And your okay, well, <laughs> is it full? Has it eaten? Is the real question I have. No, like, actually, no. We don't feed these guys. Don't joke with me. You've got to tell I'm me. Is no, it, we're what serious. I like is it full what I like of food? Is it not? Are you a girl on the first date? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for laughing at that one. No. That was a good one. We, it was worth a laugh. We no, don't feed not. them for four days prior to handling them because when you do, they, they eat their whole food. I'm sure you guys have all seen it on Discovery Channel or something like that. They eat whole food. So if you move them after that, they need time to digest the teeth, the fingernails, things like that, or else you can just cause scratches and ulcerations. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So you don't handle it. A snake for four days at least. This one's been days. about a week. We fed yeah. this one about a week yeah. ago. But so everybody says, oh, you did you feed them before? No. Yeah, okay, okay. Well, thanks for the honest but answer. But yeah, you've done it for 15 years. The CDC says that there's 7,500 people that are bitten by venomous snakes in the United States every year. I don't believe that, but if you say so. No, no, that's CDC. <laughs> Maybe snakes in, snakes in general or venomous snakes. This one's not venomous. Yeah, yeah, no, they did say it's specified venomous. I know okay. this one is it, but I assume okay. that normal snake bites are through the roof. Yeah, there, okay, we'll be and like you probably. Probably. There's still more dog bites. There's still more dog bites than snake yeah, bites for more sure. Get bit by doggies. Reptile <laughs> rescue. You started it a while ago. What have you done, and how have you changed the way reptiles are handled on the strip? You know what, Reptile Rescue, it, it, how did it start? Yeah, just, okay, I do a stunt in my show where I balance a burning Weber barbecue grill on my face and I make a giant snake appear out of the fire. Okay. Sure, anything to avoid haircut and real job has pretty much been my life. <laughs> and from that, I, yeah. when we got to working with snakes, we realized it would be cruel. If I'm gonna show two, nights, uh, two shows a night, six nights a week, I think it would be cruel to work an animal that much. So what we did was we looked into rescues and said, well, if we're gonna get another snake, let's get a rescue. So we rescued a couple more. That way one snake would work once every three or four days. Not to me, that wouldn't yeah. be, over, you know, 10 minutes um, in a magic show would not be overworking sure, an animal. I so I, I kind of felt that, you know, at the time, that was the thought behind it. But then we found out about the plight of what snakes were going through, what reptiles were going through. And um, then Maria, with her modeling career, started posing with snakes, uh, selling her photos, things like that. It built a small barn on her property. It's about 40 something feet long and about 15, 16 feet wide. Is it? Yeah. And you just walk down the center and there's cages. You're just eyeballing well, that thing. <laughs> you like are like a scared down. little guy. <laughs> anyway, that's what started. I mean, yeah. Long story short. I mean, really, I, am a little, I mean, I'm not. He I, isn't I, making I, eye contact I with see, me at all. Well, I, know, I see it's being friendly. <laughs> I just, what if I have to move real quick? You know, I gotta have that in the corner of my eye, but. It's neat. It's and right. the sweat but on I, his forehead, yeah, it's kind of beautiful. It's the lights, man, it's the lights. Sure. So yeah, Hi. so, so long here. story short, we, the more and more shows we started doing, we started getting phone calls. There was no email back then that existed, I don't think, not in 94 at least. Oh, like, that's Later the are. email came, <laughs> phone calls. People just started knowing us as the reptile people, so we just got more and more calls of people just wanting to get rid of their reptiles, whether it's snakes, turtles, you know, lizards, iguanas. Uh, and then next thing you know, we have like 25 snakes and 40 exotic animals. Well, it looks happy. I mean, this kind of happened this, by, by the by tongue fluke. coming out means sort of like happy, right? Like, is that their wagging of a tail? That's just normal. Kind That's just normal. It's how they smell. <laughs> and their tongue. Actually, if you see the tail wagging, you might want to run. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, the rattlesnake. Yeah. Well, no. Even on these snakes, when they're oh. upset, they don't rattle like a snake, but they still kind of wag the tail yeah. a little bit back and forth. Yeah. Some snakes all shake. He's just smelling the air. It seems like it's okay. How they smell, so, that's all. Okay, so. Um, I think he likes you. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't think we've met yet. <laughs> Um, oh gosh, I remember the questions there, yeah. It's like you were asking about reptile rescue. Right, right, yeah. and all the great things you've done. You want to trade seats? <laughs> oh no, I do not want to trade seats. Okay. Because you're right by the snake. I mean, I know, metaphorically. But I want to get away from the yeah. snake, no. <laughs> metaphorically, yeah. So that's how, so we built a little barn on our property, it's, and that's how she funds it, so pretty much um, okay. we, we just rescue. Do they have personalities though, can you, like, like is what, can you tell if some are friendly and some aren't? Is it yeah. about the breed that you know which ones to handle and which ones to stay away from? Like explain what you we can. should be for. A little bit. Okay, this is a royal python. They sometimes nickname them the ball python. That's probably what most people heard it called, ball python. Okay, do not all this, dogs yeah. are big. Like so German shepherds are big dogs, poodles are little dogs. Yeah. They're all dogs. Thing. This is like that's the poodle a, of pythons. It's a the small one. one. They get, okay. I, 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 this is the little one. I was kind of hoping for like a spaghetti thing. You know? No. Like something that was like in the water. <laughs> some some like were. watery. Yeah, you know, I mean, this Dylan's is. Dylan's like, I'm hoping yeah. for the little one. Let's let the chick hold the big sucker, okay? But I mean, I know, yeah, I saw Britney Spears. That was a horrible thing. It was because. 
every little girl then wanted a Burmese python as a pet. And they don't stay that size forever. By the yeah. time they get to be eight, 10 feet long, and they weigh like, you know, when they're full grown, 200 pounds. You yeah. know, that's as much yeah. as Maria. So. Excuse me? <laughs> what? I'm in a show. Um, <laughs> So, you know, the thing is, they're not going to be. So what happened within, you know, I would say six months to a year after that, as ReptileRescue.com, all of a sudden people were like, we here, did. we want to give you this snake. And we I'm like, like, I cannot clean up the mess of, of uh -huh. a thousand people. Oh, I know. Who, Just so, in Vegas, we had like a dozen have been abused albinos. Is not so I'm not saying, out. I'm not blaming Brittany. She has every right to do that. And there's nothing wrong. It's just irresponsible people will yeah. be incur influenced by things like that. And they'll do something they're just really not plan for, planning for. And unfortunately, it puts an animal's life in the balance. And it's kind of sad for us on that end. So okay. don't get an animal unless you're prepared to care for it for the entire 30, 40 years of its life. That's how long they live for? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, give it up. <laughs> yeah, the snake lover. Okay. So yeah, in the interest of time, I know you have a huge career in magic, and I'm excited yes. to see a magic trick in a minute. But I want to make sure people know I'm how they can get involved. Um, Reptile Rescue does it have its own website besides yeah, your reptilerescue.com. Okay. Yep. And okay, reptilerescue.com. If you guys want to get involved with that, and then your entertainers is where you guys your do your magic Your entertainers.com is how um, they can find out yeah, the book entertainers. entertainers. And, the, and the, yeah, the cool thing is, I know you guys are local, and for anybody out here who's throwing an event, they can hire you for kind of corporate events. You can mm -hmm. do this magic. You can bring these snakes. Yep. Um, yeah, and then your entertainers.com is where they can check it out. So I'm going to do a snake trick with you. Okay. Yeah. I assume, I assume the magic trick would involve this thing. So well, I never believed the hand was quicker than the eye. I thought the eye was pretty quick. And uh, if you're my I Age, you go back into the 70s when speed reading was big and you'd see commercials where people were like this. They're reading, you know what I mean? I'm thinking it's an epileptic seizure. That's reading to, to some speed readers. So that what, what, what you're doing there is your eye is seeing the entire page. You may not be able to make out all the words on the page, but you're seeing the whole thing. The problem is tapping into the part of your brain that's going to recognize those words. I'm going to do a little uh, experiment here, and I can tell okay, with, your in, with your interest with this snake, this is going to work great. And I'll show you how be, it works. It's going to be perfect. All right. I have a slip of paper. On the other side of this paper, I've written the names of, not the names, but the, the kinds of many different animals. I've got, you know, parrot and tortoise and iguana. All these things are written on here. What I'm going to do is show it to you. I'm going to show it to you real quick. This is how speed reading works, okay? It's okay. going to be a super quick, like not even a second, not even a heartbeat. Watch this. One, two. That's all he needed to see. <laughs> now his eye, no, think no, about it. That's because you were looking at the, at the snake. snake. No, I, no, I really, I still get the thing. <laughs> That's all you needed. No, I tried to absorb that's all I could. Okay, try you again, needed. Steve. He needs no, more look. No, that's all Otherwise he needed. Otherwise, the trick won't work if he didn't see it. It's all he needed. Yeah, I know. It's all he needed because items. his his eye saw though. the entire list. Okay. His brain understood it, but we got to make that connection. So what I want you to do is you focus on that. I'll take this. Okay. okay. Oh, now it's closer to him. Here, you take that. Yeah. Now, okay. the, my theory is, what I'm saying to yeah, you, buddy, I is, yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah. I know. is that. Since his eye saw the entire slip of paper, he saw where it said elephant and where it said buffalo and what's. Oh, I'm sorry, this no, is cruising no, around too uh, much. Cord. You gotcha. Went the cord. Yeah. All righty. <laughs> Microphone. Cord. So what happened? Well, I, don't, I mean, I don't. So what don't happened was his roll. brain knows where it's at, his eye knows where it's at. We just got to bring it from the subconscious out to the conscious. So what I'm going to have Maria do is take a scissor right here, and she's going to move it up and down that slip of paper in this direction, I'm up and keep down going like up that. And down. Okay. And I just want you to say stop now whenever you feel like it. Now you're going to feel like it because I'm implanting the word snake into your mind. Now your eyes know where it's at. Your brain knows where it's at. Your subconscious is going to bring it out for you because you're just going to say, you're going to say cut to Maria anytime you want. Just wait till you feel that little tickle inkling. You're, it'll come to you. Don't you worry. Okay. And don't worry if my finger's in the way, I'll move it out of the way. If yeah, I hit yeah, the yeah. bottom, I'll just start going And you're going to go up and down. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Concentrate on snake. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. um, just right there, right there. All right, right there. So you're going to take these two pieces of paper. Go ahead and catch those. <laughs> Go ahead. I know. <laughs> That's fine. But I didn't want it to see now, a sudden movement towards it. You, you had know me what I mean? cut on one it, of the animals. Can you put them back together yeah. and see which one you had me cut on? No, nope, it's. Oh, oh got you this way. Oh, you did. You now, maybe if you could show that to the camera. How you know did where you the know that? The I could have picked. That's pretty cool. It's, yeah. That actually did. It went right through the snake. I should have. Is he that what everyone, he, is that he had me cut know? on the word snake. snake. Yeah, she cut on snake. Give it up. <laughs> Good. I did expect that. But is that how? Aren't often? you glad we didn't bring the buffalo? That is so weird. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or the bat. Yeah. Well, there you go. You take that. I'll take Scooby. This is Scooby, by the way. Everybody oh. say hi, Scooby. Uh, Aww. That's a good I'm going to go put this away. And I'm going to give you a snake lesson real okay. quick, OK? This is going to be really easy. Cute name. It is. Scooby. It's, okay. it's Scooby. And uh, love Scooby-Doo. Grew up watching it. So 
You, I know you must have touched. You're gonna probably make me hold though. it. Yeah, I know. I, I've been preparing. For okay, it. you've been preparing. <laughs> I mean, I assume. <laughs> I assume really. like that's so, the big moment. Yep, the scared guy holds the thing. There yeah. you go. You're gonna be very gentle. So just hold out your hands in front of you gently. No, <laughs> no, that, oh, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to rush the That's okay. You're fine. You're not gonna squeeze. You're just gonna I let know, him just sit gently kind of in your hands. Oh, he's not slimy. He's not slimy. He's no, just muscly. No, they're shiny, yeah. not slimy. That's what we tell kids at the kids shows. Is there anything slimy on your hands? No, they're shiny, not slimy. And he's, he's probably pretty good, decent, heavy, heavy weight for his size, too. So I'll keep holding the head, because that's probably the part you're afraid of, right? You don't want to get bit. Uh, I, I just don't want it to, to like that squeeze it. Face. I imagine it's squeezing my arm until it breaks. Now like, when snake bites, my, OK? People, you know what I mean? people do get afraid when they squeeze. And then just fighting me over tree. and over again while I'm stuck. Yeah. <laughs> imagine you're in a tree hanging from your hands that they're just squeezing to hold on. That's all it is. Now he's doing awesome, right? Yeah. So I think there's just, I, I, but he's a big guy. I think we could like move him up to the next level. I mean, he is the star of our show host. So we're going to bring this up. I know, he's I know isn't it awesome? Yeah. But he's so oh no, 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 this one is, oh no, oh no, oh no, you're safe, what side's the head, that's not the side, this is Mr. Sparkle, we could actually put his little, there you go, do they fight each other, are they friends, they don't, they don't, they don't, that's okay, okay, thanks, um, this is Mr. Sparkle. He's an albino Burmese python. Again, one of the many rescues. We've had him quite a while. Not, it wasn't from the Brittany thing, though. <laughs> so yeah. But this is how big while. they get. This is how big they get, and this is why we do really, you know, even though we do corporate events and everything from birthday parties to bachelor parties, it almost ends up being educational by accident, you know, when you come out with snakes this big, because everybody has a zillion questions, right? So, but even this guy, when we got him, um, he's actually much better now, but the, his cage was too small. His nose was rubbed raw down to the bone when we got him, because he was Aww. in a, such a small cage. And, they'll, and snakes are hardwired. They're not like dogs and cats that understand a barrier. When you have an invisible barrier that's a tank or windows, they just don't see it, and they just keep trying to get out sometimes. So, Aw, that's yeah. too bad. So, downside sky up. <laughs> I was gonna try and make it so we, we photographer can get one picture that doesn't look like we're struggling. Okay. <laughs> No, this yeah, guy is I'm about 110 right pounds. <laughs> and of course, guys, I want you to notice Maria's holding the part that bites, Dylan's down by the part that poops. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Much safer for Dylan. Okay. Check yeah. out your entertainer.com and we'll follow course, Maria. reptilerescue.com. Let's give him one last round of applause. Woo Thank you guys. Wow. We'll just snake out this way. <laughs> yeah, give me a yeah, yeah, we did it. We did it. We got through it. It was nothing. I wasn't even nervous, nothing. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Ray Fortune. Starman's rest Them last Cause you're a gold mine My eyes But down in Austin Texas
That was awesome, Ray. Where can we get more information about your music? Say that one more time, sorry. Where can we uh, get more information about you and your music? Tell you what, check out my Facebook page. I got a MySpace page. I got a Reverb Nation page. All those are free streaming. And um, also got uh, RayFortuneEntertainment.com. So please, Ray Fortune yeah, check Let's it give out. it up for Ray Fortune. Thanks a lot, you guys. Appreciate that. Thank you. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our show. I'd like to thank all of our guests this evening. Thank you to our cast and crew, to all you podcasts at home. Remember, you're all welcome to be part of our live studio audience every Thursday night, 9 p.m., right here at the Inspire Theater, the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Fremont Street. Come party with the cast and crew for the official after party on the rooftop. Catch me every Thursday night for the after after party, midnight at downtown cocktail room. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Downtown Podcast. Thank you. Salamat. Salamat. Peace. Love. Be kind to one another.